Let's start off with Microsoft. So kicking off the week, the big tech earnings this week on Tuesday, Microsoft and Alphabet had the chance to go on um, Bloomberg Tech and talk about this. So I'm fully versed, Pat. It, it was funny. The first day was like such a signal throw. So both Alphabet, we'll get to them in a little bit, and Microsoft, they both missed on the top and the bottom line. However, they both came really, really close on the top and the bottom line. I thought it was kind of interesting as we looked at their numbers because in both instances, it wasn't like, oh my gosh, they got crushed. It, it, this is terrible. It was like, wow, they grew year over year. I believe Microsoft grew 12% on a year over year basis, but obviously a pretty significant deceleration against how good the growth has been. Now, having said that, the growth has been really, really good. So you're getting into this window now where you're comparing, if you go back a year in Microsoft time, these were record quarters. So they're still growing over record quarters and their misses were very close. They missed on the earnings side, Pat, by about six cents. And I wanna be very clear, I can give them six cents back. If you take FX, if you take the Ukraine, Russia, and you take what uh, the, the lost revenues tied to the shutdowns in China, it equated to almost exactly six cents in earnings. So the company would have been right at its expected $2.29 a share as you've taken out those things. But you can't take out those things because those are real issues. But those are things that I think if you're an investor, you can sort of look past and say, we probably won't have these shutdowns forever, although it's starting to feel like it. We probably at some point might resolve the conflict in Russia and Ukraine, although it's starting to feel like that may last forever too. And this uh, strengthening dollar probably will tame at some point. We've never seen the dollar quite this strong before, at least not in my lifetime, Pat. I, I can't speak for yours because you're a lot older than me. Um, <laughs> Thanks, buddy. And so wiser. the big number that everybody is going to ask about every time is going to be the cloud business, Azure. 40% growth. So that was a bit of a pullback from the past. But over the last few weeks, um, rather than kind of getting too granular about Microsoft, there's been a lot of sort of uh, debate in the marketplace, in the media, with business press kind of saying that this cloud bubble was about to burst. And so, you know, after IBM came out pretty strong, um, the first public cloud provider of the group, Microsoft came in at 40%, a little pullback. But remember, these are law of large number growth issues too. The number keeps getting bigger, which means that percentage starts to become harder to continue to meet time and time and time again. So people have said for quarter after quarter after quarter, this is bound to get lower. And basically there's been a little bit of volatility, but Microsoft's keeping that number at 40 plus percent is a pretty strong result as a whole. Um, Intelligent Cloud showed strong growth. Um, and across the portfolio, a Dynamics 365, another area that I focus quite a bit on, showed you know, growth above 30%, which means enterprise app uh, investments are, are still growing as well. Um, I'm gonna leave Windows and some of that stuff to you because I, I know you spend a lot of time on that stuff and Surface as well. But what I will say um, is I think Microsoft is probably one of the most interesting bellwethers as we sort of try to figure out what's going to happen in tech because they have exposure to both consumer and enterprise. They have small business and big enterprise clients. They have both cloud and prem. Um, and of course, the company is so diverse that it really can show you where you might see acceleration and deceleration. I've been saying for a while that I think deflationary tech and things like enterprise and automation and AI will remain strong. Uh, largely, the numbers that you saw indicate that that's the case. Um, but you know, they actually did fairly well in the other categories too. So I'll leave it there, Pat. I'll pass it over. But it was a miss, but it wasn't a bad miss, and I don't think it was a really bad quarter. They seem to be pretty on top of what their their earnings are, and like to see him beat, but I'm not, I'm not upset about this result. Listen, I'm going to take a victory lap um, because in the end, I, I, I nailed it on my analysis. I think everybody was wrong because they leaned way too much into the spreadsheets and they didn't fully understand the impact of foreign exchange. You can't hold a company accountable when foreign exchange within three to six months vacillates uh, so quickly. That's that's not like a, a treasury mistake. And if you look at revenue was hit 4%, gross margin 5%, EPS 5%. That was my lead in uh, to my analysis. They had a freaking great quarter. And I think if I look at all of the earnings that went out this week, uh, Microsoft won, okay? And I know you know, we don't talk about that in equity land, but 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 they did. I mean, 
now look look at the numbers um, on AWS and Google Cloud, and then look at Azure. I mean, forty six percent constant currency. Uh, it's it's obscene. Now AWS has a larger revenue base, but I got to tell you, you just cannot deny that 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 they are on on the move. Microsoft has a very large consumer business, right? Gaming was down 6%. Windows uh, was down uh, considerably, okay? Um, and a lot of that is, is tied to consumer. But when I look at Office 365 was a little light at, at 15%, right? I'd like to see a SaaS business in, in, in the 20% range. But, you know, Dynamics 365, 30%, right? LinkedIn was crazy, right? Record engagement up 29%. And I think they're benefiting a lot from the great resignation, right? Like where do you go to post your resume and where do recruiters come in to siphon it off? One of the biggest places is, 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 is LinkedIn. So they had an absolutely uh, great quarter. Heck, even Surface was up 10%. Now, year on year, if you look at that pre the, the previous quarter a year ago, it was a tough quarter for the Surface team. They were not getting supply when a lot of the rest in the industry were. But as we've seen, the overall market was down 15%, uh, 15 to 20%, depending on whose uh, numbers you, you trust. Um, Intel laid a giant egg on the PC market, as you saw, uh, they were, you know, they're saying that the market was down uh, 10%. So Microsoft even did well in PCs. And we also saw that the Mac was down 10%. So uh, again, um, I, I, you know, sorry, I usually don't call my own number, but, but, but when I nail it, uh, I nail it and everybody talk, even hemming and hawing. Wait a second. Isn't that what Biden uses? No. Um, talking about, you know, oh, they missed their numbers. Yeah, they did, but they didn't. <laughs> well, I think I think you hit that one pretty well, Pat. And I think we both can um, cheers our uh, ability to read the market. I think a lot of people are missing those seculars too, that a lot of components of Microsoft's business are just simply not going to get whacked. I've got this kind of concept and I'm going to I'm going to roll into the next one because I don't want to spend too much more time here. But I got this kind of concept that there are just certain companies that are above the fold right now that are just, you know, remember the banks too big to fail. Well, they were yeah. probably deserved to fail, but these companies are actually too important to see macroeconomic issues smash them. 